So MGK dropped an album called Mainstream Sell It last month. We've had a few weeks to sit on it. And you know, me personally, I've been listening to it a lot. And I think it's worthy to make a tier list video on as we've done in the past. This has been a controversial album. Some people love it, some people hate it. First song, I'm pretty sure this is in like uh, alphabetical order, I guess. So first one we'll do is 5150. Now, this song is, it's definitely a little catchy, but at the same time, I'm not really a fan of the entire song, so I'll kind of put it around the middle. I definitely want to listen to it, the album. Um, a, this was one of the singles. Um, S tier. I don't know why my cursor's off, but S tier on this one, because Wayne's verse is really short. Honestly, the whole song's really short, but it's really good. I think I've said this before. I really like this song for some reason. A repetitive hook, it's a simple song. I don't know what it is. Like everything about this song is solid. I do think Wayne pretty much carries and has one of the best feature verses this year. That's honestly one of the most slept on songs on the album. So yeah, that's the first S tier. We're gonna keep going though. Born With Horns is uh, probably C tier. I, I might move it up, um, but this is just kind of another song I don't really go back to a ton. Again, I'm still learning the album. Uh, Die in California. Those are a few hip hop features. This had Gunna, Young Thug, even uh, Landon Barker on there, which I still think they all sound really weird together, but that's what makes it good. Um, MGK, you kind of forget about him because the best part of the song, in my opinion, is Gunna. He's been sliding on everything this year. Young Thug has a fun verse as well. I mean, their verses are kind of like popish. I put it S or A. Okay, I'm gonna put it A for now. Um, Cause I haven't played this song like a ton, a ton. Like I've played A a lot more. Um, so I think A is worthy. I could move it up. Another one that's kind of on the fence uh, and has a Wayne feature is Drug Dealer. This is definitely one of the best ones. The chorus is really good on the song. One of the best ones. Wayne on you know this pop punk beat is really fun to listen to. On on the other song he was on, it wasn't. It was more kind of just hip hop, I guess. Hip hop, you know, a little bit of both. I'll put it S tier. Um, again, because the Wayne feature, but again, because of the chorus, I think MGK killed it. I feel like this is him in his bag. Like he's not gonna miss on a song that sounds like drug dealer, you know what I'm saying? So that has to be an S tier. Emo Girl, it's another controversial S tier. I'd say, I'd, a lot of people hate this song. I get it. It's like one of the more popular ones. Um, Featured Willow. It kind of reminds me of the, the Halsey song that we had from the last album. It's just, it's one of the better ones. I think Willow's feature, she goes off one of the best features on the album. Um, and I, again, I get it, Emo Girl, Emo Girl. It's it's really repetitive. They definitely should have thrown in some other lyrics, um, but it's still an S tier. I really like this song. Not a lot of people are gonna agree with that, but I, I don't care. I play this song quite a bit. I was playing this shit in the shower today. Next up after that is the one featured Ian Dior. It's fake love, don't last. Catchy chorus, it kind of sounds like drug dealer. Like on, on that kind of tempo of song, MGK, that's where he's in his bag. Ian Dior, his feature kind of brings the song down, not in a bad way, but like the tempo of the song kind of gets brought down for him. Um, but MGK, Ian Dior, they feature on each other's albums every single time. And I'm actually gonna move that one down to A tier. I'm gonna move that down to A tier. God Save Me has to be in the same category as Born With Horns, honestly. Although I do feel like these songs might be better than 5150. Hmm, I don't know. These are kind of the album songs that I wouldn't really select to play, if you get what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to pick all the ones with features either, but I guess those kind of just ended up being the best. Mainstream Sellout, it kind of has a weird sound to it, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but what he's saying on the track, on the title track, um, is pretty good. You know, that's kind of the theme of it. You get, you get what I'm saying? So, I don't know, I don't really like listening to this one a ton. I'm kind of on the fence with this song. Um, I'll put it C tier. I'm gonna put maybe C tier as well. That's probably a hot take because I think that's one of the more popular ones. I like listening to it. I don't really like the screaming shit on the feature. That's a little too much for me. Um, I'm really into like the pop punk lane, not really the screamo lane of this shit. When it, when it just comes to like the production and stuff, I don't really like it as much as a lot of the other songs. And I don't know, it's, it's definitely a little bit catchy. I like listening to it with the album. Um, but now that I now that I think of it, the album didn't really like start off the best. Um, honestly, this song right here, 
fits B pretty well. I think Paper Cuts is better. I listened to it, it was a single, uh, but you know, on the album, it was like the album version where I feel like the guitar, I still haven't listened back to the other one, but I'm pretty sure the guitar is different, um, as well as adding a verse at the end, a rap verse, uh, if you will. Um, so I think that song is pretty cool. It's definitely a way different sounding song, and it definitely makes it stand out uh, compared to the rest. And I think MGK needs to make more songs like Paper Cuts. Um, on his next album. Sid and Nancy is a really catchy song. It's towards the end of the, it's towards the end of the album. I think it's an A tier. It's underrated for sure. Um, it's kind of got a funny storytelling type element to the song um, and kind of talking about his normal subject matter at the same time. It I don't know the song just has a catchiness that I, I didn't realize at first so that's one that's grown on me. Um, don't sleep on that song. I think Twin Flame is... I would not listen to this song. I feel like C tier is... is it. That's why this album isn't as good as me as Tickets to My Downfalls because there's a lot of like C tier type stuff. Kind of stuff that I would only play with the album compared to Tickets to My Downfall. You can pretty much play any song and it's going to be a banger. And majority of Tickets to My Downfall would be ranking in SAB. Uh, compared to a lot of C's on this. I, again, we gonna make, we'll make edits here at the end. Uh, Twin Flame though, uh, kind of that, you know, love song, you know, for Megan Fox. Um, but I feel like the ending of Tickets to My Downfall with the interlude and then the last song, like I felt like that was an ending that was really good for that album. And I feel like he tried to recreate it with Twin Flame. Um, but I like these type of songs, acoustic guitar type stuff. I don't know why I don't like it as much. Um, but I really like when artists do like acoustic guitar type stuff. Makeup Sex is the biggest song. It's featuring Black Bear. It's S tier. Something, something in it today. I don't know if it's the distorted drums from the beginning. It's the catchiness. Um, I did hear, I don't know who said this. It was on someone else's album review. Um, it might've been Complex Ambition. Um, but someone said they should switch to Black Bear and Ian Dior features, um, because Honestly, the fake love the last hook might be better for like the radio type shit. So if you had the Black Bear feature on that, I feel like the song would be really big. Um, compared to Ian Dior's feature is a little bit different on it and spices up the song in that way. Compared to Makeup Sex would almost fit Ian Dior in a way, but I don't know. Both of those songs bang, but something in Makeup Sex today I, I really liked. Um, Black Bear's feature is cool. Um, you, I do have to be in the mood to listen to his verse because he can be pretty trash in my opinion. I kind of only listen to him when he's with MGK. Um, that's not really my lane of music. Um, but yeah, they kind of went for another hit and they have, I don't know what it is. Like that's just always the biggest songs when they uh, collab. That's the interlude. We're not gonna rank the interlude, um, but honestly it had Skeet Davidson. So it's going to the F. Um, and then World War Four. I wouldn't listen to this, World War IV. Um, it's kind of like a troll song. Dying California is really good. I play it for good. I've, nah, this song has been stuck in my head. Fake Love Don't Last is really good. Sid and Nancy, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven really good songs that stand out on this album. Um, on this album, the theme of it just has to be um, the toss up of features making great music with MGK. Um, I felt like he did try to recreate Take Us to My Downfall sometimes, whether it's just lyrically or the structure of the album. Um, I, I feel like on the next album, he should make some songs sound like Paper Cuts or he should go for Die in California songs a little bit more. Um, I, this album has been growing on me. I got one of my best listens in today. Actually, I've listened multiple times. There's a lot of good songs on this project. Like I said, these like top like seven-ish. Uh, have been on repeat so we're gonna be doing another tier list soon on geek we got a ton of other videos coming soon so like comment subscribe and i'm out